And good morning, everyone. For Jim Dobry, as, the, as my fluent Polish allows me to say. I'm pleased to be here. Uh, the session is called Talking About New Nicotine Products, but I'm actually going to talk about Snoops, which the Swedes have been using for about more than 100 years, I think. I've, um, I've talked, I've published a number of relevant reviews of the literature on the health effects of Snoops. And my, my list of publications are available if anyone wants them. I've also some I published those in the last few years. So slightly earlier than that, I published a whole lot of papers on smoke dust back then, um, more more generally, but restricted to um, North America and, and Europe. Um, I've also. Um, commented on a recent um, FDA propo proposal on um, n nitroso non-nicotine levels in smokeless tobacco products. Right, let's get on with So, some background information. Firstly, selling snooze is banned in the EU, except in Sweden. Um, a position which is rather strange, which I'll come back to at the end. As I said, Sweden has a long, a long history of snoop of use. Around 20% of men and about 3% of women use snooze regularly. It has the lowest percentage of smokers in Western Western Europe. And snooze users get a nicotine dose, which is um, measured by cocaine, which is very similar to that in cigarette smokers. Nitrosamine levels in snooze, which are um, which are of concern with regard to cancer risk, have have markedly decreased in Sweden over time. They were brought in at what they call the Gothia Tech procedure some 30 years ago, I think it is, and um, as a result, levels have declined substantially. Their levels in smokeless tobacco products are higher in the US and they're very much higher still in, in products in South Asia um, which also contain other, other harmful ingredients. There are new, one is in the, as compared with all the other alternatives to cigarettes, we're on a particular advantage for snooze because there are numerous epidemiological studies on it. There's um, Swedish epidemiology is very good because they, they have individual person identification numbers which enables one to track people easily. Some of the studies on snooze res present results restricted to never smokers and some um, are based on the whole population including smokers as well with, take, with adjustment for smoking. Some, some papers present results for both. So if you look at the individual ev evidence for some diseases. Oral and pharyngeal cancer is the most of most concern um, because that is obviously where you put the, put the snooze in the, in the mouth. Um, but the overall evidence from I've got seven studies that show no relationship. Um, this contrasts with a five-fold increased risk for oral cancer and a three-fold increased risk for pharyngeal cancer in a recent review, not by me, of Indian studies of smokeless tobacco. So it's not all, I mean, smokeless tobaccos are different. That's the clumping them together is cut, you may come to the wrong conclusion. So if you look at the evidence on, on oral cancer, you can see, um, I hope you can see from this slide, this slide shows in the middle is relative risk of one. This is snooze users compared to non-snooze users. Points to the right show an adverse effect and the lines are individual studies. I mean, generally you can see there is no effect. The, conf the, the lines represent the confidence limits of the results. So if they cover one, they don't really tell you. They just say they're consistent with no effect. There's one study by Roussar which shows an increase, increased risk um, both for the whole population and never smokers. So this contrasts quite, quite considerably with evidence for the other studies. And the white square at the bottom is the overall result, which is very, very close to one, a relative risk of one or no effect. If you go on to esophageal cancer, Four studies show no association for smokers and non-smokers combined. 
There is one study that reports an estimate uh, marginally significantly increased relative risk estimates in never smokers. The study has some limitations, which I won't discuss now, and it tends to report associations which are not seen in other studies. In contrast, the, in Indians, smokers, tobacco users, there's about a threefold increase. So the evidence for snus here is at most suggestive. There's been a lot of discussion on pancreatic cancer as possibly being caused by snus. This, the claim came from a report in 2008 which used an inconsistent approach when selecting multiple estimates from the same study. One of the studies, they included uh, an estimate for the whole population which did show an association and they omitted um, the result for never smokers which showed nothing at all. In the other study, they did actually did the reverse. They included only the results for never smokers which showed an association and left out the result for the others. So it was a, bi a very highly biased analysis. But since then, there's been a lot more studies. There's been a couple of reviews on um, smokeless tobacco, not snus and pancreatic cancer, which generally has found no evidence. And more relevantly, there's been a very recent report by Aragi and his colleagues based on a pooled analysis of nine studies in Sweden that found no association at all. So the original claim was clearly unscientific in the first place and it's not seen not to be correct. Um, SNUS is not associated with an increased risk of other cancers, including lung and stomach cancer, though some, the evidence for some of them is quite smart, sparse. Nor is there any relationship with overall cancer risk. Um, my colleague Jan Hamling and I did a calculation that if this was for smokeless tobacco, if all, if all, um, if, um, so we estimated that tobacco attributable deaths would reduce by about 99% were all smokers to switch to smokeless tobacco and they suddenly had the excess risk of smokeless tobacco users in western population. The 99% reduction is um, probably somewhat precise, I mean it's, but I'm, I would say that it's fairly certain that, um, that for snus which um, the risks are perhaps no more than 5% five, five of those for, um, for cigarette smoking. So looking at stroke and snus, the overall circulatory shouldn't be in the heading. There's, two, there's um, a review paper by myself which found no association um, in 2011 and there's a pool data analysis by Hansen a little later which also found no association, relative risk quite close to one. There's, um, looking at ischemic heart disease, um, I reviewed evidence from nine studies, again there's no association, combined relative risk estimates of 0.99, very close to one and one estimate of 1.01, .01, very close. Hansen similarly pulled data and found from eight studies and found no association. There was a report, Hansen noted there was marginal evidence of increased case fatality in snus users, but the author of that report attributed it to confounding by socioeconomic or lifestyle factors. There's a, a report by Arafalk in 2014 that if you stop snus, snus use after you've had an AM, AMI at reduced mortality risk, which might indicate an adverse effect of snus, but the reduction wasn't in fact statistically significant and one clearly needs more evidence here. There's various studies that are reported lack of association with various indicators of heart disease, atrial fibrillation, ventricular function, heart failure. Um, SNUS users have increased weight, but chronic hypertension and diabetes seemed unaffected in my 2011 review. Um, then more recently, however, a paper by Carlson concluded that high consumption of snus is a risk factor for type 2 di 
diabetes based on pooled results from five studies. I've recently, um, I have, it's actually not true, I recently have written but haven't yet submitted a paper for publication, a review on snus and diabetes based on 18 studies. I've got some slides, the first of, the first of which shows um, no ver the white blob at the bottom gives an ink. This is in current smokers for overall current snus use and diabetes. There's a 13% a increase, increase risk, which is not statistically significant, um, based on, and there's variable results from different studies. The SDPP one at the top is and the VIP one in the middle are significant on their own, but the others aren't. There's um, similarly overall for, in the whole population the results. The, the interesting bit comes in the next slide where there, there is evidence relating to, um, to heavy snus use, and there does seem to be an increase, but even then it's not totally consistent between the studies. And this and this is, um, you know, only one possible adverse effect among a lot of not clear non-effects. What else do we know about snus? There's no good evidence snus acts as a gateway to smoking. So we'll push this off. Um, the f indeed, I mean, the fact that smoking is less common in Sweden than elsewhere in Europe argues that... Um, snus doesn't encourage smoking, it's an, it's an alternative to it. The, the, there are no reports that snus discourages quitting as that I'm aware of, and there's limited evidence from some clinical trials that it might in fact help quitting. So what are my conclusions? Um, the, first, the main one is if if snus has any adverse effects on health, you clearly can't prove a negative, but they're clearly very, very much smaller than those from cigarette smoking. There's no good evidence that encourages smoking or discourages quitting. I um, mean, for smokers who still want their nicotine dose, snus is a very much safer alternative. Um, Although, I mean, there may be other nicotine delivery systems, um, which we will hear about in the conference later, that avoid inhalation of combusted material, these in things such as e-cigarettes. They may also be a much safer alternative to cigarettes, but it's actually only for snus that there is good epidemiological evidence of reduced harm. There is... Um, <coughs> I mean, I would comment on the fact that it's the legislation that um, only Swedes are allowed to buy to buy snus in the EEC is absolutely dotty. I mean, if you can, everyone can buy cigarettes, which are clearly very harmful, and only the only the Swedes are allowed the safer alternative. But um, I, there's going to be quite a lot of further discussion in the conference. And there's a final couple of last slides on some references I've cited. Thanks very much. So just to remind colleagues, we're going to run through...